Balance of payment is our last discussion of the international trade chapter. Well, it's an important discussion because uh, balance of payment is simply a, an account that records all the transactions that are taking place internationally for a country. So if you look at the formal definition of a balance of payment, it simply is an account that records uh, all the value of the transaction between the residents of one country and the residents of all other countries in the world over a given period of time. So all the money that we receive uh, and the, all the money that we pay are recorded in this balance of payment, let's say, uh, on an annual basis, uh, on a yearly basis, and we make this account. It's an accounting exercise that we conduct in order to look at how our flows are looking. Now, when you look at the money coming in, the receipts of money, we are actually putting it as a credit entry in the balance of payment and it is also recorded with a positive sign because you add all these money that are coming in or flows that are coming in. On the other hand, when you look at the money that is being paid, they are looked at as a credit, as a debit entry and are also recorded with a negative sign. So all the positive signs means money are coming in all the negative signs mean the money are basically flowing out in your balance of payment when you look at balance of payment it has three sections the first section we look at is what we call a current account when we look at current account of our uh, balance of payment it is basically looking at all the payments of uh, goods and services that a country pays and also receives so it has payments of imports and exports of goods and services but it also has few other things it also has what we call the income that is received and that is pays, paid by the country and lastly it is it has what we call our net transfers of money into and out of the country now trade in goods and services now look at this one when you look at trade in goods and services when we look at goods we call it our visible balance so visible balance will basically mean that we have all the X minus M of goods, but then we also have what we call our invisible balance, which is our services. And that is your X minus M of services. Now, when I combine this together, we will get what we call our balance of trade. So when you look at balance of the trade, we've been talking about balance of trade in the last video. It has both the visible balance and invisible balance of goods and services. So the first thing we account for in a current account is basically your X minus M of goods and services, which basically means visible and invisible balance. But then when you look at income, which is flowing in, out and uh, into the country, that is all the incomes which is coming from your investments, for, from your uh, sort of, uh, you know, like... Uh, money that you have invested, for example, uh, elsewhere and so on. So it has all the rents, for example, it may have all the interest. Uh, it may also have all the payments such as, you know, like uh, dividends that are coming into and out of the country, flowing out of the country. And it may also have, for example, any income such as wages that are in coming into and out of the country. So for example, let's say if I own an apartment in the UK and I receive rent in Pakistan, that would be money flowing into the country. But let's say if a UK resident is owning an apartment in Pakistan and he has rental income that will go out, that will be income flowing out of the country. So that's how we have the second part of our current account that has income flowing into and out of the country. And last part, is simply what we call current transfers or net transfers. The net transfers of money is basically money which is coming from abroad for which no output is produced in return. A good example of this is basically all the remittances we get from abroad. The remittances are basically payments by uh, workers who are your local workers who are working abroad uh, in other words their money that comes into the country we call it remittance or or similarly for example let's say if my grandmother lives in the UK and she sends me money as a private gift that will also be called a remittance in our account so all of these three things payments from abroad net income um, 
and your transfers makes up your current account and current account is probably the most important section of your balance of payment so just to reiterate our current account will include the balance of trade in goods the balance of trade in services the net income flows and net transfers and any of these accounts might be in a surplus or deficit at any given time there could be a deficit in the trade in goods a surplus in the trade of services a surplus in net income flows and overall surplus in the current account so when you look at a current account balance you could have all of these could be in a surplus or all of these could be in a deficit or one of them could be in a deficit and so on and so forth the next section of our balance of payment is what we call our capital account now when you look at capital account capital account is looking at the uh, flow of funds into and out of the country for a few things the first it looks at it's basically the acquisition of or the sale or disposal of fixed assets so if a somebody has fixed assets in a country and they are buying and selling of it uh, internationally uh, that will be part of it uh, included in their capital account also there will be what we call transfer of funds by migrants so for example if uh, somebody is migrating to pakistan and let's say they are bringing in money because they're now migrating to this country will be part of capital account or somebody is migrating out of the country that will be a negative entry or an outflow or a uh, or a credit from their balance of payments lastly it also looks at payments of grants by the government for projects now when you look at any foreign aid it will be part of transfers but when you look at your uh, uh, capital account capital account will be taking into account what we call uh, the movement of money for projects so for example let's say us government is giving money for a project in pakistan that will be included in the capital account of the balance of payment the last section of our balance of payment is our financial account when you look at financial account the financial account is recording all the flow of money into and out of the country for two big things number one is our investment into the country and the second one is your deposits that we have received versus also deposits that we do in banks and other financial institutions now when you look closely into your financial account the first thing we look at is that it records all the investments that uh, any country does or any country receive which is long term investment and it includes both the portfolio investment as well as what we call direct investment so what is direct investment well these are the investments that are done primarily in what we call physical assets such as uh, you know like for example us company buying a store in uk so for example if apple decides to apple the company decides to open a store in the uk that will be what we call direct investment on the other hand let's say apple buys a foreign company uh and uh and therefore basically let's say apple buys a company in the uk that would be what we call portfolio investment because that is where you are not buying a physical asset but actually buying a financial asset so we distinguish between uh direct investment and portfolio investment in terms of one on physical assets the other one on financial assets and that is included because this is long term investment other than investment we also receive what we call money which is for the short term needs this is basically called your short term monetary flows or other monetary flows or financial flows and it includes your monetary movement between the countries uh, such as you know like money coming into the country because let's say if pakistan interest rates are higher then the bank deposits will go up because our interest rates are higher than let's say other countries or even like short term loans so all of that uh these short term movement of capital will be part of your financial flows now we also argue sometimes that balance of payment should always balance to zero and the reason why this happens is because we have something called an official reserve account separately which is basically all your reserves of gold and foreign currency so let's uh, do an example to understand what happens that whenever there is a surplus let's say in all your accounts let's say current account plus capital account plus financial account you run into a surplus we basically then what we do is that we take that money out from that and put it in our official reserve account so your official reserve account will increase so this way what we've done is this that by moving the money 
out from our uh, balance of payment account and into this we have made the balance of payment to balance to zero similarly if there's a deficit on in all of the other accounts let's say current plus capital plus financial the balance is uh, negative then the official reserve account basically will provide that money uh, so official reserve account will go down and we'll take that money away from your reserve and park it in the balance of payment to meet any liability so the idea goes this that current plus capital plus financial account should balance to zero and if it doesn't balance to zero then your reserves will plug in gap wherever possible uh, sometimes reserves will go up in the case of surplus but in the case of a deficit what we will see will be that the official reserve account will go down and the balance of payment will come back to zero one last thing we want to talk about that we've talked about that the current account plus capital account plus financial account should balance to zero but there's sometimes mistakes that happen why because sometimes some payments are delayed sometimes some payments are uh, not properly accounted for and so on and so forth so what happens is this sometimes according to the international standards which are set by IMF our current account plus capital account plus financial account and the net errors and omissions or the mistakes that we do should balance to zero so the idea goes this that if ever there are basically transactions that are probably not accounted for they should be put into net errors and omissions and with time we'll fix those errors and omissions and come up with the balance of payment to balance to zero